All right, today's job, we are back in the garage, and I want to just start by giving a little bit of appreciation to this structure here. It's been such a huge help during our remodel. Uh, when we first got here, we made a couple videos just going through the garage and getting all the garbage out and sorting everything um, that we were going to eventually restore and use down the road. We've been bringing stuff into the garage, using it as a staging area, taking stuff out. The garage here has just been an ebb and flow of stuff and it's been incredibly helpful for the remodel to uh, not have um, stuff outside and be an eyesore for the neighbors and the community and also just a, a great way to store stuff that we didn't have time to go through at that time. So what we've done today so far is just we're working on getting an open space. Down the road we would really like this garage to be a roadside farm stand, sort of an omiyage shop. Um, but in the immediate future, this is going to be Evan's honeybee workshop. So all of this tatami was about in the center of the garage, just haphazardly against the wall before, and now we've pushed it to the back corner. This will eventually be used in our honeybee apiaries to keep the weeds down around the beehives. All of these shelves sort of started out organized, but after six months of fast pace renovation, they are now completely disorganized, but now they'll have a new home in this ridiculously heavy but cool metal cupboard. So one thing that you're going to hear a lot if you're considering purchasing an Akia abandoned home that has a lot of the former owner's belongings inside is that it's going to cost you thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to get rid of all the stuff because of Japan's uh, garbage and recycling system and obviously we still have a lot of things to get rid of and sort through and uh, take care of in that regard but our experience so far is twofold first it's not that difficult to break some of the larger items down into smaller pieces that are going to fit into the bags that are then collected for free by the municipal garbage so sometimes this involves clipping things, maybe it involves sawing some things or snapping some things in half, but breaking them down to the fairly large size garbage bags hasn't been that hard. We've gotten some pretty big items carried away for free just by taking the effort to break them down. And second, We've been making some trips to the local recycling center now uh, that we have a truck and we're able to get some of the larger items there. And the most expensive trip so far has been 600 yen, so that's approximately five US dollars right now. We thought it would be a lot more than that and that was taking some uh, heavy metal items as well. Okay, so in cleaning the garage, we now have a uh, truck load that we're going to try taking to the recycling center to see if they take it. We have two bags over there of soft fluffy things. They're uh, blankets and futon mats and some pillowcases. I did find a few things in those bags that were salvageable, but most of them were just pretty yucky. We have this crate and these containers of hazardous materials that we don't really know how to get rid of so hopefully the recycling center will point us in the right direction and I've got a crate there full of broken glass. We did find a couple of things in nice condition. They were kept inside a plastic linen bag inside a closet inside the house and these ones I'm fine with keeping. We're gonna spray them with some Febreze or throw them through the wash and and uh, put them out in the sun to get those UV rays on them and freshen them up. But we've got a nice corduroy maroon colored sitting pillow. We've got two of those. This is either a super huge beach towel or it's like a sheet sized towel. I'm not sure, but it's in nice condition. And then uh, we've got four floor pillows here that are uh, meant to go inside 
a pillow cover, so those are definitely usable. We went to the recycling center first and they took all of the uh, blankets and futons as well as all the broken glass, but they didn't take any of the gasoline, kerosene, we think, we're not certain exactly what it is, or any of these uh, fertilizers and chemicals. So our next stop was City Hall. They said you have to take it to JA, which is Japan Agriculture. We went down there and they said they take it on Wednesdays. So we will try again on Wednesday. All right, we went down to the JA and they took uh, all the chemicals except for what's left here. So uh, we have a few small bottles some big bottles, and we did find out where to take the fire extinguishers, so that's next on the list. And this is our local sorting station and a garbage shed back there. Um, this is sort of the equivalent of in the U.S. where you would have curbside recycling pickup, except here uh, it only comes out every two weeks, so you just bring everything down and sort it into the appropriate containers. Uh, I should note that in Oregon we had curbside recycling pickup, but that didn't exist in Louisiana, so it is different in each state back in the U.S., just as I'm sure it's a little different all over throughout Japan as well. Alright, so we've got plastic bottles. These need to have the labels and the lids removed. Then we've got uh, metal and cans, and other non-burnable metal items can go in there as well. Then we've got uh, three different colors of glass here, followed by uh, fluorescent light bulbs, which are very common here in the Japanese countryside. Then we also have old battery recycling, and over here are like aerosol cans. These are the uh, gas cans that you use for your little cook stoves. So it's very possible that this works differently in other parts of Japan. But here where we are, this is how the municipal garbage is sorted. They have yellow bags for burnable garbage and green bags for non-burnable. It took a little trial and error to figure out what belongs in which bag, but then we went down to City Hall and they had some pamphlets that laid out everything that was considered burnable and non-burnable. And basically, non-burnable is just anything containing metal and they like you to break apart objects as much as possible if it contains some burnable and some non-burnable. Um, erring on the side of metal always going in the non-burnable. So here we have some things uh, from the garage found in the house that I'm putting in these large bags. Here in the burnable bag we have uh, some of the neighbors old fishing nets, uh, plastic things we dug up out of the yard, uh, pizza boxes from Don Quixote, and uh, basically anything that's not metal. This is the only bag that was returned as not accepted, and I've just had it sitting here to go through and deal with at a later date. It got this sticker put on it. They didn't pick it up just because it wasn't sorted correctly. I think it's because the bag contains some bottles and the bottles still have lids on them and possibly some stuff inside. So we're just going to go through, resort this bag and put it back out to be collected. Now this area here is secure from any of the wild dogs or boar, which there aren't actually boar that we know of directly around our house, although they are up in the hills. So this area is here all the time. This door is where you put the green or the yellow uh, burnable or non-burnable garbage. And then in here are uh, just big mesh bags where you put your uh, styrofoam, the plastic uh, that you take off your water bottles, and the plastic lids and anything else goes in here. So that's just a super general overview of how the Japanese garbage and recycling system works, at least in our area. Just so you can see how far of a walk it is, here is our second Akia, the former Ryokan, in the background here. So if you have any specific questions, I'd be happy to help answer them.